So far we have seen Cavalieri's principle in two-dimensional space where we talked about regions or shapes of equal area. Now we are going to talk about three-dimensional Cavalier's principle where we will talk about solids of equal volume. So let us start with a plane, say a tabletop or something on which a stack of coins is placed and uh, it is not a very uh, neatly placed uh, stack as you can see but nearby say there are other two stacks so one is uh, somewhat neatly placed and one is very nicely placed stack of coins all of them contain the same number of identical coins so these three piles or you can even call them solids will have the same volume they would even have the same height as well so i can even place a cover plate like that so these three solids are now enclosed in two parallel planes now suppose we take a third plane a imaginary plane which is intersecting all the three piles and which is parallel to the uh, enclosing planes. Now if the cross sections generated by this third plane are equal all the time then Cavalier's principle says the solids will have the same volume. Okay, So if all the cross sections have the same area then the volumes themselves of the solids will be equal. Let us apply this very obvious looking fact to something that is pretty intricate. Let us start by taking a cylinder and this is somewhat special cylinder because its height and its radius are identical. So let me zoom into that and then I'm going to put a cone inside and this cone is also somewhat special because the radius of the cone and radius of the cylinder are identical and so are their heights. Okay, so the cylinder and cone are fitting like this. Then we are going to take one more solid and this time it is going to be a hemisphere. Okay? Uh, the hemisphere has the same radius as the cone and cylinder. So naturally it will have the same height as well because its radius is its height. And then I am going to subtract the cone from the cylinder which will form a conical depression like this. And then we are going to take some cross sections because that's what Cavalier's theorem does. It takes two solids which can be enclosed in two parallel planes and then it starts slicing them. So here is a cutting plane which will do that. So right now we are looking at uh, these cross sections at the bottom. So this is the base of the cylinder, this is the base of the hemisphere. But we can uh, move this plane upward and as it moves upward uh, these two cross sections would change. The cross section of a hemisphere is simple, it's just a shrinking circle and cross section of this solid is a little more interesting. It's a kind of annular uh, space, a ring, which is continuously thinning out. Okay, So we have one thinning ring and one shrinking circle. Let's see how their areas compare. So again we will start with these two solids but this time we will show them schematically. Uh, here we have the cylinder uh, from which this cone is subtracted. So we are looking at kind of the front view and a section while here is our hemisphere. Now we'll say uh, show a section line. So we are cutting them off like that because of which sections of this sort would form a ring and a circle and we'll mark some key dimensions. Okay, The radius of uh, the cylinder and height of cylinder is R and even the sphere has the same radius. Then we can find some more dimensions. Okay, uh, We can derive uh, what is the radius of this opening here. See this height and this radius are equal. So this will be a 45 degree slope and therefore whatever might be the height, the so will be the radius of this opening. So R is equal to Z. Similarly over here uh, we can find the radius of this circle by using Pythagoras. This is R, this is Z. So this is square root of R square minus Z square. Now based on these dimensions we can find the area of this slice and the other. So area of this would be pi capital R square, the outer radius square minus the inner radius square, z square. While over here it will be a simple matter of pi R square where radius is this much. So this is the area of the circular cross section. But now we are seeing something very interesting. Section of the hemisphere and section of that intricate solid that we had, cylinder minus cone, they happen to have the same areas and not only for a special cross section but all cross sections because this z is a variable, this z and therefore we can apply Cavalier's theorem because all their cross sections, all their horizontal slices are going to have identical areas. Naturally they will have identical volumes. 
and finding the volume of a cylinder and a cone is something easy that we already know but that will lead us to the volume of a hemisphere so let's see how that goes so I'm going to write the expression for volume here it is going to be volume of cylinder minus that of cone for cylinder it is pi r square multiplied by height which is r here and for cone it is one third pi r square into h h is again r so you can take this pi r cube common outside you are left with one minus one third which give us two third pi r square so this is the volume of the solid formed by subtracting a cone from this cylinder but from Cavalier's principle it should be exactly same as the volume of this hemisphere and therefore the volume of this hemisphere is two-third pi r cube and then what will be the volume of a sphere twice of this so four upon three pi r cube so just by using this simple logic uh, we are able to arrive at the volume of a sphere